The Bodleian Library is one of the oldest libraries in Europe. Its collections include the Gutenberg Bible, the first book printed in the Western world, which dates to 1455. The library also holds a copy of Shakespeare's first folio, four original Magna Carta manuscripts, and the Goff map, which is the earliest recognisable map of the British Isles. These historic collections and buildings are still used by students and academics from all around the world. They also attract hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. The buildings used today date back to the 15th century, but the origins of the library come even earlier. In the early 14th century, although there are a number of colleges that formed the University of Oxford, there was no central place where the university could come together, either to meet through its senior leadership or to study in the form of a library. The Bishop of Worcester decided to invest his own money to build these facilities in the year 1320, here at the University Church of St Mary the Virgin, in a room that still exists today. Like all medieval libraries, it was in a room on the first floor because they were always worried about flooding and the best thing to do was to put your library upstairs. Until then, the few books that the university possessed had been kept in strong chests. But now there was a room that was specifically designated for the purpose of the preservation and the sharing of knowledge. That library began a 700 year history. It was in the year 1488 that the building of the next university library at Oxford was completed. Duke Humphrey's library is recognisable for its starring role as the Hogwarts Library in the Harry Potter films. The library was built to house a priceless collection of 281 books donated by Humphrey, the Duke of Gloucester and younger brother of King Henry V. Humphrey was a man of great learning who had mixed in the community of humanist scholars and brought back some of that learning with him in the form of books to England and he decided to give his library to the University of Oxford. We don't know why, but it was an extraordinary moment in the university's history, more than trebling the size of its library in a single stroke. And the university decided that such an extraordinary act of generosity needed a building to match it. And a building housing one of the greatest book collections of any medieval university needed tight security measures. These books were chained in a manner that was familiar in the Middle Ages, um, before the days of tagging or any other security systems that libraries use now. It was an effective way of making sure that no one walked off with a book, but it did make adding to the shelves or rearranging the books very, very complicated. But the library only lasted 60 years. During the Reformation in the 16th century, it was broken up many books were removed in an attempt to purge the church of all traces of Catholicism. The bookshelves were sold and the library was laid waste. Most of those books from Duke Humphrey's collection don't survive, although a few of them can be located in other libraries and a handful have been acquired by the Bodleian, sort of regaining them. It was Sir Thomas Bodley, a fellow of Merton College and from whom the library gets its name, who rescued the library. In 1598, the library began to be refurbished in order to house 2,500 books, many of which were donated by Bodley himself. He came to visit the old library room and was shocked to see the condition that he found it in. And he decided to dedicate his own life, his own wealth, to refounding that institution, to rebuilding it, to furnishing it with books, and to provide the funds to employ the first librarian. He was a visionary, not only in the collecting, but in the running of libraries. And his library was known at the time as an ark to save learning from deluge. Today, there is a Latin inscription that sits above the door to the old library, which translates as, Academicians of Oxford, Thomas Bodley has built this library for you and for the Republic of the Learned. May the gift turn out well. And it certainly has. Over the 400 years that have happened since, we've opened our doors not just to students and researchers here in Oxford, but to researchers from across the globe.
As you pass under Sir Thomas Bodley's inscription and enter the old library, you will find the Divinity School. Although not used as a library, this masterpiece of English Gothic architecture is the oldest surviving teaching room at the university. The Divinity School was built as a room for teaching and examining in the highest subject of the curriculum in the Middle Ages, which was theology. So we have to imagine the Divinity School full of people listening to theological debates going on, being conducted from one side of the room to the other. Adjoining the Divinity School is Convocation House, which was built as a meeting place for the university's supreme governing body. It also served as a home to the English Parliament during the Civil War. The room includes a curious hinged lectern whose design gives an interesting insight into social history at the university. Over the period of time, the number of lunches and dinners that the Chancellor has had to attend has grown so much that they needed to put the lectern on a, a piece of hinged machinery to enable the Chancellor to slide in and out of his throne without losing his dignity. Today, the room is also used as a licensed wedding venue. Next door to Convocation House, you'll find Chancellor's Court, where discipline was maintained inside the university during the 19th century. This extraordinary survival, uh, an early modern courtroom, is still here to be seen in Chancellor's Court in the Bodleian today. The early 18th century saw a spate of library building at Oxford. The building of the Radcliffe Camera, Oxford's iconic piece of classical architecture, was built as a memorial to physician Dr John Radcliffe. The Radcliffe Camera was a completely separate institution when it was built from the Bodleian. A medical library, the Bodleian needed more space and it looked across the way to the Radcliffe Camera as the nearest building which it could acquire. There were ideas of building a bridge from the old Bodleian to the Radcliffe camera, but, and designs were made, but that bridge was never built. The impressive circular building is still used as a library reading room and enjoyed by millions of tourists who visit Oxford each year. Towards the end of the 19th century, as the Radcliffe camera was becoming full, the Bodleian again looked for more space and this time decided to build one of the first underground bookstores. Now modernised and used as a reading room, the bookstore was named Gladstone Link in 2011 after William Gladstone, the Victorian Prime Minister at the time. To Gladstone, the Prime Minister was sometimes attributed the design of the bookshelves in um, the underground bookstore, um, and that's where the name Gladstone Link comes. He didn't actually design them, but he was, as a great bibliophile um, and himself a scholar, interested in how to store books and about mobile shelving. The library was connected to the Old Bodleian by an underground tunnel that is still used today. It is also underground in the library's portrait room that paintings of some of the Bodleian's 24 previous librarians are safely stored. It wasn't until the 20th century that the library had its first female librarian, when Frances Underhill was appointed in 1910. Frances Underhill set a precedent for women working in the library. Until then, women would have had a much more subservient role. They would have been supporting male colleagues, but doing things that were considered women's work, like sewing books or making cups of tea or cleaning. Now, when you look around the library, you see women right across you know, the workforce, from you know, senior management right down to you know, support staff. Many of these staff are responsible for helping maintain the collections and buildings which are so important to the history of the Bodleian. The old buildings of the Bodleian here in the heart of Oxford are some of the most celebrated architectural structures in the entire world. But the fact that we maintain them as places of study and of learning, of the preservation and dissemination of knowledge is absolutely key to their continued success and to the continued success of the Bodleian today. Thank you.